Hello and welcome back to Nine Honey's Everyday Kitchen. I'm Jane DeGraff and today we are making a vegan blueberry and lime cheesecake. Now, I am not a vegan, but I do really love vegan cheesecakes because all we're doing is taking the dairy out and replacing it with a whole lot of mixed nuts, which trust me is so many flavors of delicious that you won't believe it. So we're just gonna get started with the base like we would with any cheesecake. And for that, I have one and a half cups of mixed nuts here. And I'm using almonds, some of them roasted, some of them slivered and some walnuts because that's what I had in my cupboard but you can use any nuts you like and all we're gonna do is pop them into our food processor and blitz them up until we have fine crumbs. In they go. So it is as quick as that. Those are our nut crumbs, which look like this. Look at that, fine and sandy and nutty. But you don't wanna keep going until you have like an almond powder. What you want is some little crunchy bits in there. To that, I'm going to add one and a half cups of desiccated coconut. In we go. And a quarter of a cup of rice malt syrup. Now this is instead of honey or anything like that because that makes it vegan, but you could use honey. You could certainly use maple syrup if you wanted to, but the malt syrup helps it stick together, which is what we're after, so we'll pop that in. And then here I have one cup of medjool dates that I have softened and soaked in boiling water just for five minutes. You can use other dates, but they will need soaking a little bit longer. Medjool dates are the nice sticky ones that will help stick this together. So in we go. And now we're gonna blitz that all up until we have a paste that will line our cake tin. All right, that's coming together nicely. So now all we need to do is take our lined cake tin and we're just going to take our mix, pop it into the cake tin and then press it down to make our base, just like you would with any cheesecake mix. Oh yes. All right, so that is our cheesecake base pressed into our tin. That's gonna go into the fridge while we make our cheesecake filling. Now that we've made our base, it's time to make our alternative cheesecake filling. So what do you use when you can't use cream cheese for a cheesecake? Simple, you use cashew nuts that you've soaked overnight in cold water. This is 500 grams of cashew nuts and you can see they've sucked all that moisture back in and we're gonna blitz those up to make our alternative for cream cheese and it goes lovely and creamy and smooth. So to that, I'm going to add most of a tin of coconut cream. This has been chilled in the fridge overnight as well and what you get is this really thick topping and we just want the thick top part from the can to go in there. Look at that. Oh yeah, it will be most of the can, but don't put the wet stuff in because we want this to retain some density once we've blitzed it up. So there we go. In with that. I'm also going to add half a cup of rice malt syrup. That is our sweetening agent. So in that goes. Then we're also just gonna tip in with that half a cup of coconut oil. This is the setting agent, which will help us to get some stiffness to our cheesecake once we've chilled it. So in that goes, and a dash of vanilla. There we go. Now, this is the fun bit. We've got some serious blitzing to do to get this to the consistency that we want. So we're gonna start like this, and then we're gonna use our poker to poke it all down and get a nice creamy consistency. Are you ready? Let's do it. <laughs> You can see that's coming together, but what we need to do now is make sure that we're getting everything blitzed up exactly as we want. So don't forget to scrape down the sides as you go. All right, that looks pretty done to me. Let's have a good look. What have we got? Look at that, a nice smooth paste, which is exactly what we want for our cheesecake filling. Now comes the really fun bit, and that is the colouring and flavouring. So what I'm going to do here is take my filling and put it into three separate bowls. And there's a reason for this. We're actually making an ombre cheesecake today, which means we're taking one colour and going through different gradients to get the most beautiful effect when you slice the cake. To do that, we need to colour parts of our batter separately. Not batter, cheesecake filling. So I'm going to put some into one bowl. Some more into another. Get the rest 
and pop it into a third bowl. Okay, so we've got about a third of our filling in each of our bowls. Don't worry about it too much if you've got a little bit more or a little bit less. What we're gonna do now is take our first bowl and we're gonna flavor it with some lime zest and a little bit of lime juice. This is gonna be our base layer of our beautiful cheesecake. So we'll mix that all in. There we go. That is delicious layer number one. Now, what I have here is some blueberries and all I did to these was microwave them to get them really letting their juices out and then blitz them up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit into one bowl and I'm gonna put a lot into the next bowl just to give us some different colors to fill our cheesecake with. Are you ready? Let's do this one first. Let's put that in and see how we go. All right. There we go. Look at that. And I'm gonna add some more to this one and make it darker again. Now you can actually do this with any berries that you like. If strawberries or raspberries are in season or that's what you like, you can go ahead and colour it that way. It's entirely up to you, but I'm using blueberries because that's what I've got. Now you can see I've got two different shades of purple there, but I reckon I want to go darker again. So I'm going to add some more blueberries to this one. Okay, those are our three colours. I'm going to go and get my base and we're going to start our layering. Right, so we've got our base out of the fridge and what I like to do is put the palest layer of our cheesecake filling in first because it gives us nice contrast against the base when we slice the cake later. So we're gonna scoop that in and then spread it out as flat as we can get it on our base. And then it will need to go into the fridge just for 10 minutes or so to let it set a little bit so that we can add our next layer and keep them separate while they're setting in the fridge. All right, that is layer one going into the fridge just for 10 minutes. Right, so that is 10, 15 minutes in the fridge or freezer just to set our first layer. And now it's time to pop on our second layer. So in it goes. Now you don't have to be overly neat with this, but the neater you are, then the cleaner your line between layers will be. You might want it swirly and soft, or you might want it nice and sharp. It's entirely up to you. Right, back into the freezer or fridge just to firm that layer up. Right, we're ready for our last layer. Here we go, top purple blueberry layer. On it goes. I'm gonna spread that out and smooth it out as much as I can. And then we're going to really stick this in the freezer and let it set properly so that we can slice it. That is our final layer of vegan blueberry cheesecake. Now I'm going to pop that in the freezer for at least an hour. We really want it properly set so that we can take a nice big slice out of it and show off those layers. <laughs> well, here it is. It's been two and a half hours in the fridge and I reckon our beautiful cheesecake is ready to cut. So the first thing I need to do is this. I've got to peel this off. Oh yes, one and the big reveal. Look at those layers. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I am very pleased with how that's turned out. The big reveal. Now all that's left to do is decorate it. So what I have here is some bits and pieces. So some frozen blueberries, some flowers from my garden, some gold dust that you can just get at the supermarket and some dragon fruit powder because I'm feeling fancy. This is not essential, but I tend to do this to my cakes because it looks so very pretty. Just do some of that over the top for the extra colored effect. Now, as that gets damp with the moisture on the cake, the pink is going to bleed out into the top of our cake, which will look so beautiful. I am going to add some frozen blueberries because this is a blueberry cake. So we'll pop those. And now we need some gold dust all over the top of the cake for the little finishing touches. All right. Oh, if that's not looking like a celebration, I don't know what is. And now all we need is a couple of little sprigs of our beautiful flowers. You could turn up at any party with this cake and people would be 
So thrilled to see you. How beautiful does that look? Oh, last thing to do now is to give it a cut and see how our beautiful layers turned out. What I have here is some hot water with my knife in it that will just help with slicing of the cake. And then all that is left to say is good luck. And look at that. Thank you so much for joining me for Nine Honey's Everyday Kitchen. I will see you next time and you can leave me here with my beautiful piece of cake. Mm.